Hey sunshines, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liza Jane, and some of you may also know me as Liza Lux. I am not alone today. I have Piper here with me. Piper is lab pit bull mix. She's very crazy, but right now she's being a good girl. So we're gonna let her stick around and join in on the fun because we are all hunkered down in the house for this time period. We are self-quarantined. The dogs are loving it, to be quite honest. They are living their best life with a little girl running around in the backyard with them. So anyway. This is my Piper, our youngest, our puppy. Everybody else is old around here. Today, I wanted to talk about neck pain. Because I have chronic pain, everything with my body can be magnified. If I have an accident, an injury, some kind of soreness, my problem becomes a little bigger. So when I say I understand neck pain and shoulder pain, I understand it and I want to help you to understand why it can happen, what it can happen from, how to avoid it, and what you can do about it in the meantime. So let me say that just getting dreadlocks is not going to give you neck pain because you're going to have the same amount of hair on your head. What you will experience though is when you get your hair wet. It will get heavier. You will feel the difference when it is wet. If you have a towel on, it's going to obviously add to the heaviness until your hair dries. That is something that we can all experience is the heaviness from that and you will have to adjust to that feeling. For most people, it is no big deal. However, when you add extensions to the mix, it can make a difference. When I first had extensions, it was no problem. I didn't feel a big sense of weight added. But as I went along in my journey and I added more extensions and more extensions, I did start to feel the weight. I also feel the weight when I add a lot of bulkiness. So last week I did a video about adding volume to your hair and how you can add extensions for volume. That is something that activates soreness with me. So I have to be very careful about how long I keep those in, when I should take them out. No itching on camera. I want you to be aware of that fact that when you do something like that, when you add bulkiness, you are changing the pressure on your neck and on your shoulders. The first time I experienced neck pain, it was a hairstyle and it was so super cute. I'm gonna include a picture so you can see it, but it was adorable and I loved it and I got so many compliments on it. That day, I kept it in for five hours. Now, I generally know that I can only keep a style in for an hour or two at the maximum without it affecting my shoulders my back. I have to be very careful with how I style my hair, where I style it on my head. I have to change my styles within a day or leave it all down. That is what's easiest for me. Everybody's different though. Some people have less pain with it all up. Some people have less pain with it all down. So I had that hairstyle and suddenly about five hours later, I had a huge migraine and it just continued. I quickly took my hair out of the style and babied myself that night. Obviously took something for my head. Next day woke up, could hardly freaking move. It was insane. I went through about a week of pain and ended up at the chiropractor to see if he could help me. He did suggest that I lose some locks because at the time I had added so many locks and my hair was past my butt and it was super heavy and he suggested that I get rid of some of that and I honest to God, wasn't ready for that. So I continued to go to the chiropractor and I continued to do exercises from home. At the end of this video, I will show you some exercises that I did to help strengthen my neck. I am no expert, I am no doctor, but I will show you what worked for me. I definitely recommend if you are dealing with pain to consult your doctor or to go to a chiropractor or to look basically on YouTube since we are quarantined to our homes and find out some different stretches and exercises you can do to relieve that pain. Another thing to be aware of is the jewelry in your hair. If I get a headache throughout the day, one thing I do first thing is I take out all the jewelry of my hair because it can add some bulkiness to it. And even though you're like, it doesn't even weigh a pound when you take it all out, 
which I have. I've taken it all out and I've weighed it and I can have 40 beads in my hair and it doesn't even weigh a pound. But because it's at different spots of our hair and we are lugging it around all day, it can add bulk and heaviness. So we have to be aware of that. I also think that the way you sleep, and I have made a video about how to sleep with dreadlocks, and I will of course link that in the description bar and up above, but how you sleep can make a difference. You wanna make sure that your pillow is in the crick of your neck, because that makes a big help. I throw mine over my pillow, up and away, so that it is not in the way, not causing extra pain. I notice that when I wear my dreadlocks up, this can cause a lot of weight issues, especially if it's off to the side. Even a style as simple as this, and all I've done is I knotted my hair on the side, can cause extra strain on your head. Especially in the beginning, I highly recommend that you ease into different styles. If you are starting off your journey and you want to do amazing buns, do them, but allow your body time to go ahead, oh, I'm losing my partner in crime. Are you leaving, Pipey? Are you leaving? <laughs> All right, bye. Am I boring you? Oh, you're back again. Lay down. Now you lost my train of thought, Piper. What were we talking about? Oh yeah. So you want to ease into different styles as you begin. This can cause a lot of stress on your scalp, on your shoulders, on your neck. And you know what? It even can go into your back sometimes. So start gentle. Start with small amounts of time and build up your strength as you go. For some of us, it may always be a problem. For some of you, maybe it's just something that you work into, you build your strength. Obviously, if you have your locks for years and years and they get to a length where they're growing and they're past your shoulders, they're past your bra line, they're past your waist, they can increase with weight that is so heavy that you need to do something about it. And don't forget, there's always the option to cut your locks it will give you a sense of lightness. I know that even when I've taken out my extensions, it's like, whoo, all of a sudden you feel light as air. So there's always that option also. I think the biggest thing to remember is dreadlocks should not hurt. So you need to find ways to enjoy your locks and enjoy your styles without causing pain because, well, that's just ridiculous. You shouldn't have to live with pain for a hairstyle. Just be aware of all the added things that you're doing to your hair that maybe you can adjust. Even sometimes different jewelry on a different section of hair feels better. Or if you normally wear a high ponytail, try a low ponytail. If you normally wear a high bun, try a low bun and vice versa because everybody's body is made differently. A lot of times people will ask me if they already have neck and shoulder issues, what will it be like to go ahead and start dreadlocks? The thing is, is dreadlocks by themselves are not going to hurt your hair. You're still gonna have that same amount of hair. So just getting dreadlocks, now at first there might be tension from where they started your locks, but you won't have any difference. As long as you're not adding extensions or anything like that, you're not going to have added weight just because you have dreadlocks. Does that make sense? Is neck pain something that you have dealt with? Is it something that you worry about before you get dreadlocks? Is it something that you worry about when you style your hair or put jewelry in? I would love to know. Please comment and let me know below if you've ever experienced neck pain or you worry about it. So I'm editing. It is obviously the next day. I actually washed my locks and realized that I lost my footage. I think what happens is by the time I get to recording the end of the video, sometimes I must start to slack and I think I'm pressing record and I'm not. And I think I'm turning it off and I'm turning it on. You get the picture. Anyway, I have to say a proper goodbye. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope that your necks are happy little necks and that you don't even need this video, but it is here if you do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, please subscribe to my channel. I do upload every Monday and Thursday. I hope you guys stay safe. See you soon.
When I was suffering through all my pain, I did some simple things to build up the strength and to help my shoulders and my neck when I was in pain. I would sit up real straight. I would roll my shoulders back. And I would do things like this, just to stretch it out, to relax myself. Do that about 10 to 20 times. Then I would go forward and do these. Like I said, I am not a doctor. This is just me, Liza Locks, telling you what I did. Not giving you any kind of medical advice, just sharing what I did. Then you can take your shoulders, relax them, let them fall down. And then you can ease your head over to one side and this feels super good. You're just stretching it out. Go to the other side, make sure you go even first. Stretch it out. Go forward. Go backward. And these feel really good. So do them as long or as often as you want. I like this one. It feels so good. Do these guys. When I was in my worst pain, I did these a few times a day just to help myself feel better. I'm so crackly. You can do these up and down. Pipey, you did it. You did it, girl. Good girl. Did you help me on the video? Did you help, Mommy? Good girl. Yay.